my name is Matt Putin. Uh, he's going to talk about laminate. <laughs>
and we want to use that for all these new algebra. So it happened that I was actually trying to create something that does this, so I took a development version of Demogate, I just chose the Linux version number to be the latest, which actually was masked because Sage is an standard the latest version. Martin volunteered to fix this, but I don't know. Maybe he didn't say this because. But of course, this Lemonade is a work in progress, so it works for the developers, it might not work for others yet, but it solved this problem. So I wrote some code, which actually I found on the Linux mailing list, to compute rank of sparse matrices with Linux, ran on mine, and then I transferred it to our bigger computers, it ran on that. Of course, after Lemonade is called Linux and all the dependencies. Ah, I should mention that, you know, for that Linux was not enough, and that's why I am talking to Emmanuel and maybe Kato and FS would be able to solve the problem much, much faster than I ever dreamed. So what does Lemonade do? It is intended to be a distribution of mathematical software. Since it's a distribution, it can distribute out of software, of course, but we are focusing on that. It should install packages and keep track of dependencies and conflicts. This is what we expect from all distributions. And it so we don't want to install your own operating system on top of the existing one, so you want to use the tools that are existing on the system without having the administrator rights to the computer in question because usually we don't have root access to our supercomputers. Not all of us own them. And it should support updates. Updates are always problems, so relatively small updates, no promises. And of course, we want to enable people to share their development for easily. How does it work right now? Uh, we all like the, at least locally, we like the Gen2 Linux distribution. Lemon is also built on Gen2 and there are many reasons for this. One of them is that it's a source-based Linux distribution which only contains its own set of recipes on how to install packages and what they depend on. These things are called emails and they are written in Bash, which everybody who packages things knows already. It's based on that system, but of course, we take, so this problem distribution of software is already sort of solved, but the distributions want to own your computer, and in this case, we don't want to give away the whole system. We just want it to work in a package. So there's a solution to this. The Gen2 developers who are actually involved, involved with high-performance computing environments set up the Gen2 prefix system. This lets you install Gen2 in your home directory. And it works on Mac OS, FreeBSD, Solaris, and sometimes even Windows. But there's a problem. It actually installs its own compiler, and you can even run services of this thing. So it really installs the whole of Gen2. If you want to just install the box, then you probably don't want the compiler on GCC. Or well, why not? <laughs> uh, I mean, there could be a point. Could be, but uh, your, your target machine maybe has an outdated GCC, and the first thing, first thing you are going to, to be required to do is compile a new GCC. So. Yes, but it should be optional. So you shouldn't require okay. that, you know, if you just want singular, you also compile GCC with it. Or the latest version of Sage now compiles its own GCC, which I don't know. I wasn't sure about that. It's not outrageous. It's not as well. No. 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 <laughs> If your GCC version is later than 4.7 or something, you compile GCC. No. Really? Yes. You know, it's, as they say, it's a decent operating system, but the uh, lexical <laughs> computer I think we should include Emacs in the yeah, same no. suit. So, next step. So, this handles the package. So, there is a packaging system which does things. There is, you know, we need the packages, and the packages come from the Gentle Science group who already you know, provide a lot of scientific software to work with Gen2 and they have members who do the you know, packaging of mathematics software already so we don't need to actually create so many packages to create back to describe how our software is installed it already knows how to install singular even with the Python interface right now it was updated like a couple of days ago now there's no Python used by the singular it can install Macaulay 2 and Polymate which are usually very hard to get with and the uh, last part, even Sages packaged properly to work on Gen2. 
safety tools, as he says, a lot of things. And it comes as a monolithic package, which you know, wants to have a separate copy of almost all the software on your computer. So Secure Gen 2 actually splits it apart and makes it work nicely inside your own distribution if you are running Gen 2. And Lemonade actually makes you run Gen 2, like half a Gen 2 in your home directory. And I should mention that you know, with Secure Gen 2, since updating packages are really easy, you can just you know, have the package manager that's you know, you want the next version. You don't need to really modify files, create new tables, etc. Most new versions of scientific software are tested on Sage and Gen 2 and now they start pushed to Sage uh, There is a last component which doesn't involve the name Gen 2 in them. It was actually written by a Sage developer, Volker Graham. This lets us explain it. It's perhaps the compiler, so that uh, it provides relatively key facts when you're compiling within your own environment. So this prevents uh, packages compiled within the prefix from getting uh, confused by libraries that lie outside of the prefix. So it makes sure that if something is available in your own lemonade or then the prefix domain, then it is used from there. So you might say that the distribution problem is already solved by the we need another one, and there are you know, lots of solutions of this, even in mathematical software or you know, around the world or everything. Sage has one of the solutions, they are called SDKG, they are just parables with a script that installs them, but they are very simple, they require a lot of maintenance. Since they are very simple and there is no abstraction or anything, everybody has to write, you know, even for the simple software, their own install script. For example, if you have a regular software package which uses auto tools, uh, so you can install it with the regular configure make make install routine. In general, you don't have to do anything to actually package it because it knows how to do that itself. But for Sage, you would actually need to catch your own errors, make sure you print proper error messages, and you know make sure that. Of course, you always have to describe dependencies. But you need to enter the dependencies in a file, which I forgot the input actually, which will follow. This system was actually adapted by some numeric people to distribute their own packages, but maintaining it is hard, and I don't think any of those projects actually live at home. Sage lives because there are a lot of contributors to the packaging process. There are then customized solutions in MAC42 for the main part there and all these things, which means you go to Tarball and uh, make files to actually do the scripting business that the Sage package system does, which is again very hard to maintain. Then there are all these tools that let you, if you develop some web application on your computer and you want to deploy it to a server, so Python for example, or Ruby, or all these things need these tools, you develop something and you want to deploy it, so they support this scheme. But they have their problems, they don't really support our, so they don't, let you develop on the server. You just need to work somewhere and transfer your code, and they don't handle uh, software that is outside of their tool chain, and of course they don't know anything about mathematical software. So this holds for home group. And Nix is something upcoming that will probably not be usable in a prefix environment for quite a while. Although now there is actually an effort to create a Nix flow, probably based on Python, by uh, this non-focus foundation that was recently set up to support the numeric software that uh, I built around the Python environment. So just to rehash, Lemony is supposed to be a platform for research-oriented mathematical software development and distribution. It is a distribution of mathematical software, but you know, it follows the distribution from many other places, so we don't really create a new one. It is supposed to create a uniform environment for fast, providing fast arithmetic and fundamental algorithms. I think Sage does a pretty good job of creating a uniform environment. But uh, there's a problem that you know it's not very configurable. So you have to take the whole package or leave the whole package. You can't just say, I don't want you know, these two packages. We use Spindrag to cut a few packages and create P Sage, but that was also not maintained after a while because it's too much work. So you need to rely on some packaging system which already makes it easier to maintain all this. And 
once we have you know, a uniform environment, then also these smaller libraries can rely on each other because you will know that you can easily depend on something. You will not be afraid to use functionality from some other system. You won't be tempted to just you know, copy code and put it in your own library because the users will not be able to install the other library. And we need tools to access experimental code. This comes with Gentoo's concept of live events. So Gentoo knows how to pull from a Git repository or Anturia repository and compile the code. So you can use these to actually set up a development environment for most packages. We had this discussion a couple of times today. And I had something that I want to say as well. This brings up the question of monolithic versus modular uh, software for mathematics. So we used to have a lot of monolithic packages because of the problem that users would not be able to set up something if there were a lot of small pieces. So there are you know, larger packages which contain all your needs, but of course they cannot really contain all your needs because it's a lot of work to maintain the whole thing. And the stage it dies, but still. There is no pressure for it to grow, but should it grow or not? And then recently, there are lots of single-purpose libraries which try to live in the uh, habitat of mathematical software and survive on their own. And some of them are very simple and they are very useful, so they get by. And examples we heard of that are already maybe in my league, uh, IMF, and Plus is relatively independent, it depends on Plus. These are much easier to develop if you want to do something with them. So if it's a smaller library, then you can you know, look at the codes, learn how to use it, and add your own. But if you want to get into something like Macquarie 2 or Singular, then there is really a lot of code to get by, and then a lot of conventions, so you're less tempted to actually look in the kernel for these things. But of course, if you're setting up your own small library, it will have to depend on other things if you want advanced functionality. And then your users will have to install their own dependencies, and it's a problem, they might not want to do that. So Lemonade tries to create some platform where this is handled properly, and the specialized libraries can exist together in this. So what do we want from the future? Of course, as I said, it's in the making, so there's a lot of testing to be done. It doesn't quite work on all these platforms, even though Gen2 prefix does, because we pull out the compilers from under the distribution, and you need to test on all the different compilers and link systems and I don't know, full chains. With that, we need more packages, not all the mathematics software we need is actually covered, so there's still another package for Lila, even though Lila is almost in half. It should also support some of the needs sites of Sage. For example, you can set a sage install, take a sage install and move it to another directory on your machine and it will just work, it knows how to read that path. This is actually quite easy, you just need to write a script, but demo it doesn't support that yet. And uh, it does do sage support. Yeah, I said sage support. Uh -huh. <coughs> but I think not on back. So I can set up development environments for the software that I developed, but unfortunately add more and it's not scripted, so this is one of the things that needs to be done. And of course, since Portage is flexible and it can actually have different profiles and actually that you mark some packages that are already existing on the system, we should set up some scripts to detect whatever is already on the system and not reinstall it. For instance, Sage installs its own Python because it relies heavily on Python and it used to patch Python, so that's some specific change to Python to the picking system, so that Sage works. But now in latest releases, in 273, this patch was incorporated in Python and we should be able to get away without installing it. Not installing Python ourselves. So that one should be able to support that. And that's it. Yes.
transfer of the typhoon, because I get tested on a lot of machines and I don't want to transfer all the sources together. They download from the internet, but there is one directory where if you put all these tarballs, then you just use them. So you didn't tell us how to get started. <coughs> There is a website with a really old snapshot. I can, okay, it depends on how experimental you want to be. I can give you the latest version, which doesn't quite work, and it will definitely fail on your computer. Or I can give you a three, four month old version, which will be on your computer, but will contain stage 4.7. But if you go to lemona.de, then there are instructions on how to So like the 2012 thing, that's uh, say 4.7, 2011, 12, 01. Yes, that's 4.7. That's a different repository, stage 5. It only works on my computer. But it's so easy to update uh, software in this framework. Uh, it's a problem. Somebody has to test it on the computer. Right. Any more comments, questions? Many people are working on this. Is it your project? It's mainly my project. And then some people, maybe once in a while, get interested and can follow them. There's a mailing list with, I think, 15 people or so. But so, nobody is working on it for five minutes. It's a great project. How long is it to start? Oh, sorry. Um, I think yeah, I put that one is in August. So, if you can put it on one of the four that. What is the thing that you want me to do? Testing. Because you can never replicate all kinds of different Linux distributions and their software configuration for OSEPs and different like, things, etc. I suppose. So if you just test and you know, test the first error message that appears in the mailing disk, that would be good. Does it work the same? Does it work the same? Yeah. It is supposed to. Somebody tried, I think. I don't remember how far. I mean, you can't use Sage and the system, this is known. And the default target for them may used to be Sage, but it should be able to do similar. So you said Windows is support, does that mean something? No, Prefix supports Windows. It's not simple. Uh, it's it Intex. Yes. It's called Intex. <laughs> I don't know Windows. All right, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.